everybody, Zeev Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master. Welcome to this video. And in this one, I'm going to talk about the issue of removing a failed implant. How do we remove it? And I'm relating to an email that was sent to me by a doctor by the name of Corbin Pop. Uh, you've seen probably previous videos where I uh, showed him how to do a phrenectomy for both of his twin daughters, I think they were daughters, or twin kids, and he graduated from the Surgical Master Crawling Thinning Program, uh, so he keeps emailing me, and uh, let me see, let me show you uh, the case that he was asking me about. So basically he's asking me, Ziv, what is the best way to remove implants? He has a 68-year-old female with a history of breast cancer with a lumpectomy, you know, had a lumpectomy, uh, with severe perimplantitis and wishes to remove two implants, number 20 and 21. And I figure remove implants, graft, free gingival graft and heal. <laughs> He's getting a little bit ahead. Uh, Corbin, uh, take it one step at a time, okay? Uh, first of all, let's talk a little bit about the reason you're removing these implants. Uh, it looks like from the, at least the Panorex, that there is advanced bone loss on the number 20 implant. The question is, what would be what would be the what would be the consequences when you remove the implant? What's the plan to replace? I see that those two implants are splinted, and the other question is, what's the status of number twenty one uh, on a panorex? It's hard to tell, but it looks like the bone levels are relatively relatively good. Again, I can't tell more. Uh, I can't give you more information. Uh, based on based on the uh, the X-rays that you sent me, but that's the first thing I'd like you to look into. But definitely the number twenty implant looks like there is quite a bit of inflammation. Uh, we definitely see that one of the contributing factors is the poor tissue quality. There's a little bit of a frenum pull as well, and you know I I, I tend to agree that number twenty can be removed now. Um, when you say the patient wishes to remove the implants, uh, what was your recommendation before uh, before she expressed her wishes? That that's always interesting because uh, what you need to have is very definitive guidelines when it comes to removing implants. Okay, uh, you have to think about: um, Am I removing an implant that is loose, or an implant that has an active infection, or it's symptomatic or the patient is about to have some other type of surgery and you can't have any type of infection in in the body uh, and also think about the consequences because very often when an implant fails uh, number one it fails for a reason that you need to look into but num number two as it fails there's going to be quite a bit of a or a large ridge deficiency so you have to take it take it into account and you also uh, mentioned that in your email. So if your decision, if your recommendation, and don't go by what the patient wishes to do, but if your recommendation is to have one or two implants removed, the best way to remove an implant is with a removal tool that applies reverse torque on the implant. And now we have great systems, great tools, uh, depending, on the, uh, depending on the implant system that you have, but we also have a um, kind of a general tool for for most implant system systems that engages the internal connection uh, you connect it to your torque driver and apply reverse torque and um, I find that um, I'm able to remove implants more efficiently with this tool now sometimes the integration is as such or the implant configuration is as such that the reverse torque is not going to work meaning it's either going to strip the internal connection, so it basically basically will disengage from the implant itself, or it'll break the implant. You'll have one component uh, inside the bone, which is a bit more difficult to remove. And then you need to resort to a more, let's call it aggressive way of removing an implant, like using a trefine, a trefine burr, or remove bone around an implant, like removing an ankylotic root tip, okay? So removing implants uh, is not always easy. Uh, look into what, which type of implant this is. I, I can't tell from the x-ray, but it looks like a, a um, pretty conventional implant design. It could be a Nobel, it could be 
uh, an Astra, uh, I'm sorry, or a uh, Strawman uh, bone level, but uh, that's for you to, to find out. Now, I would not do too much, meaning I would not remove the implants and do a, a, a gingival graft at the same time. I know the problem is in part the poor tissue quality, but, quality, but I would not remove, r remove the implants and graft at the same time. The chances of success are not very high. You'll have to uh, displace the mucosa. You'll have to suture the, uh, the graft down. And I think you'll probably have a big dehiscence or definitely a fenestration. So what I suggest to you, if you decided to remove the implants, remove them, try to reverse torque them first, try to um, remove them as atraumatically as possible. Uh, the bride uh, treated like a, an extraction socket and simply graft and close it up and then let it heal, assess with a CT scan, and then uh, later on do your free gingival graft, your GBR, and whatever needs to be done to place implants again. Again, a, 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 a word of warning, uh, replacing implants that failed in, with advanced bone loss, with advanced perimplantitis is not an easy task. Not an easy task. So. Uh, just be prepared for a little bit of a battle. Uh, some implants we tend to nurse along. We may decide to remove one of those implants, not both. And I hope this was helpful. I hope I'm giving you a little bit of t tips, a little bit of um, some, uh, some thoughts to, to consider. And I'm glad you got your scrubs. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Feel free to share it with other dentists and until the next video this is Dr. Zeev Simon from Surgical Master.